So the Diamond League has officially started for this season and it was in Doha. So yesterday the Diamond League was in full force yet again. And honestly, I can't really recall when a opening Diamond League had this calibre of athletes in. It was quite adverse weather, really windy. And that's why the pole vault actually got cancelled, which is going on today indoors instead. So the performances aren't exciting at all in terms of times or distances. I think the high calibre of athletes made this Doha Diamond League a good success. But it's just a shame we didn't really get to see people run really quick. So the top performers, I would say the men's 1500 metres will kick that off first because it featured Timothy Chariot, who is the Olympic silver medalist, the fastest of all time, the defending world champion. It also had Abel Kipsang, who came fourth in the Olympics and also recently just ran a 331 at altitude by himself. And this just shows how bad the altitude conversions are. If you convert that to sea level time, it's a 325, which is obviously quicker than the world record. So altitude conversions, unless Abel Kipsang is in world record shape, which no offense, I, I really doubt, it's the altitude conversions are a bit strange. So in this race, Abel Kipsang led from gun to tape. The, they were never really with the pacemakers. And again, and I think that was purely because of the wind. The original pace was set at 151 through 800. That definitely wasn't the case. But Abel led from start to finish and held off a fast finishing Timmy for Chariot down the home straight. The women's 400 meters, a very big upset as Mila Weibo, the Olympic champion, places third to slowing down in the last 100 meters. She faded quite badly. There's no real standout times or standout performances. Mila Weibo was definitely the favorite going into the race. It was sort of a shock not to see her take the victory. The women's 3000 meters featured possibly the performance of the day by Neon Saba. She led from gun to tape and normally it's still impressive, but when you look at the wind and how impressive leading from gun to tape was, that is seriously, seriously highlighting how good she is. Not to mention the fact that Faith Kipiegon essentially just ran behind her all the way and couldn't outkick her. So bear in mind, Faith Kipiegon, arguably the greatest middle distance runner of all time in the 8 and 1500. Olympic champion, probably the fastest finisher we've seen in women's history in terms of middle distance. And she couldn't get past Neon Saba, who led it from start to finish. So that's why she's getting my performance of the day. And she's carrying on from where she left off last season. The men's 400 meter hurdles. It feels weird to call this an upset because the Olympic bronze medalist beat the Olympic silver medalist. And obviously the fact that they came both medaled at the Olympics shows that they're close together. But De Santos beat Rai Benjamin, a relatively fast time considering the conditions. The men's 800, and I don't know what's wrong with it at the minute. It was the same last year. It's always really underwhelming to see the results of the men's 800. Because you look at the fields, this one, you had Arop, you had Rotich, you had Brazier. You had Ball, Daniel Rowden, an amazing field. And a 149, yes, it was windy, but a 149 in a Diamond League is crazy. Great to see Brazia back on the track. I actually do like the Union Athletics Club singlet. It was a shame to see Brazier not do too well in his first race back, but it's great to see him back on the track. The men's 200 meters, USA really seem to dominate this distance at the minute with Arian Knighton, Kenny Bednarek, Noah Lyles and Fred Curley all running some of the fastest times in the world this year. It was a battle between Lyles and Fred Curley this time around and they ran 19.72 for the win Lyles. Even though we talked about the wind, it was only plus 2.1. So just illegal. How do these compare going forward? Because is Knight in the favourite going into the championship? You'd have to say so, but he hasn't medalled yet and Lyles obviously has and so has Grass. So is Fred Curley in the 100, so it's very interesting. It's also going to be interesting to see who makes it out of the team in the USA Trials because it's a very tough team to make. And with the women's 200 metres, it was Gabby Thomas who took the victory in a sub-22 clocking. And Dina Asher-Smith also featured and Sarika Jackson. Dina was leading after the bend, but she seemed to fade a bit in the straight, coming third behind Gabby Thomas, who won. And Pac-12 is currently ongoing, but the 10,000 metres were yesterday and it was a straight final. Charles Hicks won the men's race in a time of 28.11 and closed in a 54 last lap, which if you can close in a 54 after 28.11 whilst being the age Charles Hicks is, it's scary and it's just really sad from, from my point of view as a runner as well. The main headlines were from the women's race where Sia Zabo ran 32.38, which is a French national record. She placed second in that race behind Abby Nichols. To run a national record, regardless of your age, is very impressive, but you're only 20 and it's still quite early on in the season that is great to see full results of both the meets we've talked about can be found in the description and we will be making a video on the pack 12 
after the full finals have done and any other key races at the weekend. Let us know what you think the performance of the day was yesterday. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and goodbye.